Hello, John. How are you? I'm fine. If if you hear any noise in the background, it, it's just my fan because it's it's so hot in my room. I don't have any air conditioning, so I just have to keep a fan like right in front of me at all times. All oh, right. Get oh, all yeah. the ice cubes and put it in front of the fan, John. That'll help cool it down. Yeah, I should probably do that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. This Stephen Anderson stuff. You went. You say you went rogue, or it was a bit rough, or something. so. Basically, basically, what happened was with the whole. Uh, Steven Anderson thing, like I began seeing problems with the whole new IFE uh, system way back in uh, January of 2019 when the whole uh, scandal of, of Donnie Romero, who's one of the new IFE pastors, uh, ends up getting busted for basically seeing like being a prostitute and, and gambling and that kind of stuff. And basically, one of the pastors of Donnie Romero, or one of, one of the pastors he was training, was a guy called Adam Fannin. And basically, Adam Fannin, uh, what happened was is that supposedly this is an independent Baptist church system. And supposedly they're independent churches, you know, they're, they're self-governing. Well, Anderson, because the, the church that Donnie Romero pastored was uh, Steadfast Baptist Church. It was that's what it was called. So Anderson marches into Steadfast Baptist Church. It's not his church, but he, he basically goes in and basically starts calling shots and uh, basically tells them, he basically tells them who their new pastor is going to be. And at one point, one of the congregation members said, well, can we, can we have a vote on it? Because, you know, we're the church members. Anderson basically says, no, I've already picked the pastor for you. So like, that was the first thing I saw. Because, wait a second, I thought there were supposed to be independent churches. How come Anderson is able just to march in and 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 they have no say in who, which pastor they get? Because Anderson already picks a pastor for them. You know, at that point, I, I noticed, I, I kind of was figuring that, yeah, it is starting to look like it's some kind of denomination because, if it's independent, they should just vote on a new pastor. Like, why does Anderson have to come pick a pastor for them? And then also, I also saw problematic how the pastor that Anderson did select was a guy called Jonathan Shelley. And um, he, he wasn't supposed to get ordained until the Sunday of, of the week that Romero got busted. He got Romero got busted on Wednesday of the first week of January. And then uh, the Shelley guy was supposed to get ordained on Sunday of that same week. Well, Shelley was not even officially ordained yet, so he, he technically at that point was not the pastor yet, but yet he was already calling shots and acting like he was the pastor. And at one point, Fannin uh, didn't was refusing to get under Shelley's authority for you know legitimate reasons that that Fannin didn't think Shelley was a good pick and that you know he felt that um, that th they should wait for a better option. And Shelley just said, "Oh, you're fired," and and basically Anderson sends Fannin a text message saying, "Oh, you're fired." And then I, I noticed that basically instead of and then both Shelley and Fannin that Sunday both preached sermons attacking Adam Fannin. And, and I was kind of thinking like, wait a second, you know, Donnie Romero, this Donnie Romero guy was the one involved in all these perverted sins. How come you're not doing sermons on him? But then they basically switch all their and dump all their, their you know, all their hatred on Adam Fannin to kind of like, you know, take away attention from Romero. And, and at that point I started to realize, yeah, it's starting, starting to look like a cult almost. And then, you know, eventually later on, I began seeing more and more and more problems and then got to the point where I was thinking, like, OK, I, like, I got to get out of this. So I, I left and, you know, uh, very quietly, too. They didn't even notice I was gone. And then I was just rogue for a couple months. And then it was uh, November of 20, that same year, 2019, where I joined the Brian Dunlinger cult. And I, I'd already been listening to him for like months prior. Uh, in fact, it was actually his videos that were part of the reason why I left his or left Brian or left uh, Anderson's cult. So I was part of Brian's cult for about about a year. Then September of 2020, actually it was September 27th of 2020, because uh, the, the day prior I came out with a live stream, just simply just simply just voicing disagreements, just simply like trying to lovingly just say, hey, I, I don't agree with Brian on the whole video game thing. I think that you know if it's a clean game, there's no violence, there's that kind of stuff, no profanity. I think there's nothing wrong with just playing it in moderation. And, and, you know, I was trying to be very nice and meek about it. So then uh, Brian Dillinger's protege, Aaron Deering, swoops in uh, on some kind of, like, you know, holy papal mission for Pope Brian Dillinger. And it's just in the comments calling me all kinds of just attacking me personally, attacking my mom personally. You know, I mean, like, he hasn't he hasn't even seen or known my mom anything about her, but he's attacking her personally. Um, he he claimed, he said, like, in the comments... He was saying that I, I'm possessed with the spirit of divination, and uh, he like he goes on to suggest I'm a Jesuit or something like that. And I'm thinking like all this for simply just voicing like disagreeing with Sir Brian. So at that point, I realized yeah, Brian is running a cult too. So I left that group as well. And um, 
at this point, I'm kind of just at this point, I'm just kind of back to be rogue. You know, I'm not part of any group. I'm not part of any sect. Just me and the Holy Spirit, basically. I'm not. I don't want to be a part of any you know cult or anything. So, and 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 it does seem now that now Aaron Deering is getting a taste of his own medicine because now the Brian Dunning cult wants nothing to do with him anymore because I think they, they've now seen his true colors. So yeah, yeah. that's my that, that, that's my story in, in a nutshell, pretty basically. I mean, if I was to go to, through every single detail, I might have I'd have to write a whole book on it, basically, or like I do like a whole hour long video <laughs> on it, you know? Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, sounds like it. And, yeah, um, his old stats on video games was ridiculous. I thought I thought that was fascism. Yeah, it, it was. Stanley, it yeah. was essentially. I mean, the thing is, is that I can understand, you know, okay, games like grand theft auto or that kind of stuff games are all about like crime and, and violence and drugs or whatever yeah i can understand like those being sinful but like like minecraft or or like super mario brothers i mean the the, the, the yeah. like the lump that in the lump like the lump that in with games that are like for like 18 plus you know all kinds of shooting i mean the weird it, it, it essentially was you know getting into the grounds of of being very legalistic and and, and pharisaical and, and basically putting all yeah. these standards on you and, and everything that like are not scriptural. I mean, that, that was, you know, I mean, Tim was right. You know, Brian Dunlinger was essentially uh, like teaching Lordship salvation. He was, you know, making, he basically was making like video games into a salvation issue. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I found disturbing because I like my sports games, you know, I like my rugby games and my cricket games on PlayStation, you know. And I thought, how could they be a problem? You know, how could a sporting game be a problem when you're you're increasing your reflexes and you're sort of educating yourself on it's got educational properties about it in the game, like uh, who's won the most and um, you know who's got the most runs and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, I just thought um, his whole idea on uh, video games was garbage. Uh, you're saying yeah, that, yeah you're turning into the salvation issue. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing too is that you know and and, and you know I, you know I don't you know with the whole thing with the whole Jeremy Carter thing. I don't agree, you know I've talked to Jeremy Carter. I don't agree with him on everything, but him and I we, we talk over over text message and you know a lot of the problems that he is seeing with Brian are like legitimate problems. The fact of how he, he basically will make anything into it. Like basically pretty much anything that Brian does not do is, is made into a salvation issue pretty much. And that everything that, that Brian himself does not, does not personally have a struggle with, because keep in mind, you know, uh, Brian was married. I think about like, he, he started ministry, I think in 2007 or something. And he was not married to yeah. 2013, 2013. And I remember him saying that up until he was married, he struggled with basically video games and pornography. But so, yeah. so when he, so basically when he was doing video games, it was not a salvation issue, but then all of a sudden now it's a salvation issue. So it, it shows that like anything that, so that is like anything that Brian himself is not personally struggling with is, is made to a salvation issue basically. Yeah. Next, he'll be saying that chopping wood on a Sunday is against the, you're not saved if you chop wood on a Sunday or something stupid, you know? Yeah. And, and, and like one, one of the, the criticisms that Jeremy, you know, raised, which, which, you know, I personally had for a while, but I, w I just never said it, is how, you know, Brian would, 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 would somehow would basically like make you think that you're not right with God if you don't live the way that he lives. And I, I actually did a video recently saying how like not everyone's in a position, you know, financially or physically where they can just go out and live in the middle of the woods off grid. You know, not everyone's in that kind of position. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, personally, I, I'd love to live off grid. I'd love to just, you know, move away from the city and just get somewhere in the countryside, but like, I'm not, in a, I'm yeah. not in a financial position or in like a, I'm just not in a position where I can do that. So it's like, you know, am I in sin for not doing so? It's like, you know, I mean, I mean, it's easy yeah. for Brian. It's easy for Brian because he doesn't actually have to work a nine to five job. He, he just gets money online i actually work a nine to five job you know i actually yeah, you know so so it, it's like you know if i was to go move off grid i'd have to first quit my job i had to put notice to quit my job then i'd have to move somewhere then i had to go find a job there so it's like it's it's it, it's it's not as easy as, as it sounds to just pick up and go move off grid especially if you have like a you know a nine to five job i mean it's easy if you just live yeah. off donation i mean it's it's pretty easy when you just live off donations but like not everyone's in that position that's that's the thing no, no. I was given an opportunity to live on a farm for ten years, and I took it. That's the only reason I went. Lived on a farm, and it wasn't off grid. It was still on the power grid, you know. And it wasn't in the middle of nowhere. It was sort of well, forty meet, uh, forty minutes drive to the nearest uh, grocery store. 
So it wasn't exactly like off grid as per se. Um, and he's talking about off grid that could be next to the grid, you know, or in amongst the grid, but you're living on a farm which is totally self sufficient as far as power options go. But then does he get a generator in, a diesel generator? Or well, what, what's the go with that? Where What are the rules to living off grid sort of thing, you know? And, and that's another thing too, is that when you do live off grid, you know, your house will, will like need more kinds of, more kind of like physical maintenance, but it's hard to do that when you're working a nine to five job because you're not home as much. And, and yeah. for me, like, like in my situation, the job I work is very physically demanding. I mean, I'm, I'm like lifting lots of heavy boxes. I, I work the night shift at a, at a grocery store. And it's like, by the time oh, I get yeah. home, I mean, basically, by the time I get home, I, I'm just like I'm just I'm tired. I, I just I'm want to I just want to rest. I want to go to sleep, you know. So it's like yeah, ha like having to do that plus maintain like a whole house. I like personally, I just I just couldn't do it. You know, I had to have to you know, I couldn't do it. So you know, not yeah. everyone's in a like basically not everyone's in a position. I mean, I I'd like to be in that position, but I I'm just not able to. So it's like so it can so like acting like it's a sin to like not live the way he lives, you know. It's like, yeah. and, and and then even even like even like if you don't dress the way he, I mean, some of his followers actually get to the point where they're like they start dressing like him and looking like him. I mean, it's like the, <laughs> like the it's like the, I mean like, like you notice it like the, they'll actually buy that like red lumber jacket he wears. They'll start wearing that hat. They'll start like growing a beard. It's like, <laughs> you know? I thought that photo was funny with the three of them. Yeah, the three of them yeah. wearing the red and black. <laughs> Well, it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I mean, like basically, all I have to do is I just went on each of their channels, took a screenshot from the video, and just put it together, and just said, you know, I mean, it's a cult, you know. <laughs> I mean, at the, it's like, yeah. you know, I, I mean, if they're getting to the point where they actually start looking, it, it's like, and, and most of the people that follow him, you know, the the, the they, they have so called ministries, which is basically just them starting a channel because you know they maybe Brian told them to, and they just make videos, pretty much copying Brian, emulating Brian. Basically, that's all I do. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that. They're doing a lot of that. Is yeah. your quality allowed? The what now? What is it? reality allowed <laughs> in the blind dialing? <laughs> oh yeah, oh. yeah. I, I doubt it. I mean, I mean, you know, it's good that Philip Newton called Brian out on the whole Christmas thing, but like Philip Newton still looks like a clone of Brian Dillinger. I mean, I'd say Philip is probably the worst out of all of them. I mean, he like he goes to like like whole new lengths to imitate Brian. I mean, and, and not just like physical appearance. I mean, like the same background studio, the same like video style, the same intro, the same you know bookshelf with yeah. all the books, all the Ruckman books in the background. I mean, you know the same the same KJV <laughs> banner, all that stuff. You know, it's like the desk with the computer on it. You know. Yeah, that's the thing I that was that was the thing with the music. The music sounds almost identical. The intro music. Yeah. No, no, it's, it, 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 it's the funny part. So when Aaron came out and basically attacked me and, and revoked my salvation for disagreeing with Brian, he actually accused me of trying to emulate Brian. And I was like, I'm like, how do you do that? Because like a lot of the stuff I come out with, I like even when I was part of Brian's call, I tried to come out with a lot of original stuff. I tried not to just, you know emulate brian and like he, he said oh your, your music is similar and, and then it's like i was i was telling this to bob you know a couple months ago that the music that i use in my video is, is from a guy called kevin mcload and, and i've been using his music like from before back from before i was even saved so it's like it's yeah, not me emulating cool. brian i've been using that music before i was even saved before before I, before i even like like took christianity seriously you know i mean before yeah. i was even part of steve anderson's call i was using his music so it's like you know uh, and, and I think this is the problem too, which is having only online ministry is that you don't know them personally. All you know is just what they're what they're like on camera. Like you don't know what you, you don't know them personally. So like you make all these judgments about them that are not true, that that you you would figure out if you knew them personally. But all you know is just them on camera. That's I think that's the problem with just having online only ministry. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I but. Um... Kevin McLeod sounds familiar. I think I've heard that name before. Yeah. And he does a lot of instrumental music, and it's uh, similar to, um, like, um, yeah, no vocalists or anything. Is that the one? Yeah, a lot of it. Uh, well, there's some, sometimes there's a chorus. Sometimes there's, like, you know, just 
stuff in the background but a lot of times it's just royalty free uh instrument instrumental music and he has he has like, he has yeah. like hundreds he has, he has like hundreds of, of songs he made so it's like a wide selection to choose from you know yeah, so, so yeah. if, if one of the songs that you just happen to sound like brian dellinger's song okay so okay what's your point you know he's got hundreds of songs you know there's probably others that sound like brian's song too you know yeah yeah no, I mean, I mean, it, Patrick O'Hearn. Oh yeah, yeah, Patrick O'Hearn. You might be interested in. He's uh, he's an instrumentalist. Does a lot oh, of yeah. soothing music, a lot of bells and cymbals and stuff like that. Yeah, percussionary instruments in the music. Um, whereas Brian's music is like violins and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a lot of like that old sort of um, Celtic sounding music. Oh, and, and that's the funny part too. Aaron accuses me of emulating Brian. And meanwhile, his you know salvation message has the same style of Celtic type music. So it's like who who is really emulating yeah. Brian? You know, I mean, it has like that. What's yeah. that? What what's that that instrument called? Like the, the bagpipes or whatever. I mean, he has Celtic, so he has the same style of music. Meanwhile, he accuses me of trying to emulate Brian. You know. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit hypocritical, isn't it? And the thing is, too, is that I've, I've talked to other brethren, even even like months ago, other brethren, and, and they're telling me, too, that, you know, they've they've had a problem with Aaron, too, for a while. They, they have problems with just how hypocritical he was. And, and you know, uh, and, and basically they're, they're saying, you know, that that especially now, because like what this has been like what the third time or fourth time he is supposedly apologized in like a couple like a month or so later, he comes back is like back to making videos. I, and there's like some of them are saying like at that point they just knew he's yeah. he's double minded. He's double minded because like I mean this is probably the third or fourth time he he quits. Yeah. He so supposedly quits ministry. He says he's no longer fit to be preaching. But then like a month later he comes back and is back to preaching. You know. Yeah, that's the thing. Here we've yeah. got some uh, I guess it was, information yeah. here. We got some, uh, we've got. Um, what was that? Got some information. I'll put it on. I'm trying to read it. I'm just trying to. Wrap oh, my is head that around about... why they would emulate and be clones of Denlinger? Yeah. The dunce. I mean, that, that, can't they think for themselves? You feel so corrupt to the core. Yeah, the fanatical four. <laughs> That's a classic. <laughs> I actually so Dingle you know, Bells. You know you know one of those thumbnails I made with like Brian Dillinger's face, like superimposed on a Pope's body. What this um, the guy that made this yeah. newsletter that Bob's showing, he actually used that image in one of his newsletters. So I found that kind of interesting. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, when yeah, be, be, the pipe the pipe done. Yeah, I I, I had basically he, I had basically like. What what I did was I took, I took like I just cut out Brian's head. From, like, I, I cut out like an angry like an angry face he was making on one of his videos, and it just, just inserted that like superimposed on a pope's body, <laughs> and it's called like Pope Brian Dillinger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he looks good in the mitre, in the mitre hat suits him. I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is too is that you know I I, I pointed those out with some of my videos, you know he does behave a lot like a pope he's very he's very controlling he's he, you know he wants to he's, he's very like a like a diatrophies he's very controlling you know he does behave a lot like a pope so you know and yeah he wonders why people call him you know father yeah. brian dilling or, or pope brian dilling or because that, that's just the way he behaves you know i mean like he, he behaves like a catholic priest yeah. yeah he'd be saying why don't you do it this way why don't you do it that way don't do yeah. it this way and, do it this way do it my way and then if you disagree with him, you're basically yeah. a lost sinner or that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, like I guarantee you, if you're a Catholic and you basically yeah. tell the Catholic priest, "Hey, you're wrong," you know, let me show you what the scriptures say. The Catholic priest will just say, "Oh, how dare you question me? You're lost." You know, well, Brian does the exact same thing. So you know, people call him Father. You know, that's the yeah. thing too. Like one of the things that that I really came to a realization of when I left the whole cult is that. People don't just accuse Brian of things for no reason. Like, there's a reason why Brian's accused of being a cult leader. There's a reason why he's accused of being prideful and that kind of stuff because he is. Because that's the way he behaves. But like, yeah. but like people don't just accuse him of that for no reason. You know. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big mess over there with in Dingletown. That's what I call where he lives <laughs> yeah. in Dingletown. And yeah. The Dingleberries. And if you ever watch. Yeah. Um, table you you're familiar with the song with the yeah. guy with the little horns on his body and he's pressing the horns 
that's a classic song i reckon yeah i mean i i i've had my beef with king's table but i will admit that that song was pretty funny actually it, it was uh yeah i forget yeah. the name of the the band the band's got a name um Kone, yeah I, Kone, I, I, I have, i'd have to like rewatch that old video just because i think he shows like on screen what the name is i'd, I'd have to rewatch it but yeah it was it, it is a pretty fitting like like the sound of the song is pretty fitting because like you know like them and cult they're just a bunch of clowns you know that's i'll tell the act yeah you know it sounds like clown music yeah that's the thing it, it sounds actually, like like german clown music almost yeah german clown music but when you think about it it'd be pretty hard to play like if you had to put horns all over your body and press them at exactly the right time each different horn you'd have to get yeah. used to to it you'd have to work practice it and stuff it'd be like an instrument you know and i guarantee you that, like that like that video was probably not like the only take they probably did like multiple takes of that video to like get it right true probably too oh yeah yeah you yeah. probably done like a thousand takes you know yeah to, to like get it all perfect you know without any flaws no nah, that's it unless they were geniuses or something yeah I, I, used to, I used to when I was in high school, I used to take a, a film class, like or it was a because one of the like when you're in high school, you can you can choose your classes in some cases. So I, I took a film class, and we one of the things we had to do like some kind of audio production, and it was kind of funny because like 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 a lot of us kept messing up our lines, so we probably did like like like, like each of us probably like alone did like twenty or thirty different takes because we like we kept messing up our lines. Yeah, uh, yeah, Conus Hupin, that's the name of it, Conus yeah. Hupin. I think that's the way to pronounce it, Hupen or Huppen. Music yeah. and text, Korst Conrad. Very yeah. Here we go. Yeah. It's <laughs> 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 a classic. Yeah. <laughs> He's got this gleeful look on his face. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought I love all the gnomes in the background. I think it's just a funny little added added little thing in the background. Yeah, the gnomes. Where, what country is yeah. that from? Like where they got gnomes everywhere? I think it's a Celtic thing. I don't know. I, I, I know how it's like, I know how in some cultures like gnomes are like like some kind of spiritual being or whatever. Like they're like tricksters or whatever. But I think it's more. I think it's the Celtic uh, or like some either a either a Germanic or I guess I just know like like Germanic you know pre pre Catholic Germanic you know culture you know like like no, like there be enchanted forests and and like there be gnomes and that kind of stuff in there or whatever. That's just what yeah, that's just that's what I've heard the, one time. Yeah, we like the pixies. Yeah. To that video in the uh, in the private. <laughs> It's actually funny because when you actually look at like Celtic and Germanic like belief on fairies and that kind of stuff, they weren't like your Tinkerbell that kind of stuff. They actually were like malevolent creatures in Celtic and Germanic mythology. That's what fairies were. They yeah. actually were like like they, they were they are dangerous and malevolent. I mean, like, like you did not want to go near them, you know, especially if you're a yeah, child. But if you're a child, well, I mean, even if you're if you're a child, but even if you're an adult, they they were they were. I, I think like in their culture. Like if you're a child, they're like more of a danger to you. But even if you're an adult too, they were like somewhat of a danger as well. So it's like, you know, they weren't like your Tinkerbell, you know, pixie dust type stuff. They were actually like very dangerous, especially to children. Yeah, that's the thing. Maybe they yeah. were demons in disguise. Who knows? I I personally think so too, because you know, like you know, the Germanic people would say, "Oh, the forest was enchanted." I think there was a very good reason why they called the forest enchanted. I think there was all kinds of spiritual activity going on in these so-called enchanted forests that they got the name enchanted. You know, I do believe that. Yeah. And and, and maybe there yeah. could have been cases where you know children or even adults were attacked by you know demons that or devils that they you know thought were fairies. Who knows? It could have happened. Well, yeah, they had more witchcraft back then, didn't they? Yeah. So to enchant a forest, you would have had to put spells on it and stuff. Yeah. And so the possibility would be higher when you had more witches yeah. doing all sorts of potions and stuff like that. And, and then also that, yeah. 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 Oh, go ahead. No, you're all right. Go, but, and, go then, ahead. And, there's also, and then there's also the factor of two of how 
you know, the supposed the, the pagan, the Germanic pagans, the supposed methods they have to counter this witchcraft, which is other forms of witchcraft, basically. Like, like, like you might put some certain spell or whatever, like that would counter it. Well, like you, like you're basically just like, like in a biblical viewpoint, they're just trying to fight witchcraft with witchcraft, basically. That, that's all they're trying to do. Yeah, that's the problem. Instead of fighting yeah. it with good old Christian prayer, they're yeah. fighting it with the bad same thing, you know. And well, which is why you know, like, and plus, which is why too, like you hear cases of oh, well, well, this 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 certain spell it will work temporarily, but then they'll just come back later. So it's like you know, so so like 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 even these these so called spells. I just think too, when it says they work they work temporarily, I just think that what would go on is that the devils would just play on an act, or they they pretend to go away and then just come back later. That, that's just my theory on the whole thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. It's a temporary thing, and it yeah. shouldn't be. It should be like permanent, permanent solutions. Yeah, because yeah, once once you're saved, once you get the Holy Ghost sealed inside you, like you can't be possessed. I mean, you, like you can you can be tormented by devils. You can be you know, like in a sense, you you can be haunted by them, but you can't be possessed or controlled by them. Because like in the sense of them controlling like your movement and that kind of stuff. Because you know you have the Holy Ghost inside you. All all they can do is try to attack you from the outside. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The strongholds within the Holy yeah. Ghost is inside. And um also um yeah, with this whole um Denlinger thing, I'm not sure whether they're um whether they're believers in eternal security or not. I don't know, I, I, I question know they're that motorists. sometimes. They're not very they're not very consistent on that because whenever you disagree with Brian, I guess you you've now had your salvation revoked, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, they know the the building worth the worship in the building thing. It's sort of like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Not all church buildings are places that you should avoid. I mean, a lot of places church buildings are fine. They preach the gospel. Um, many yeah. don't, but most I believe most still are uh, preaching the gospel if they're like um, yeah. non Catholic church buildings. And there's also something yeah. too is how I was actually looking through Brian's forum and or on the forum on that that King James Video Ministries.org website, and and they also they, they seem to just they, they label every church building as 501c3. And, and and I know I know plenty of, of or I've I've seen plenty of church building pastors you know like not a lot but there are some out there who are vehemently actually opposed to five hundred one c three, and one of them was actually um, what's his name Jason Cooley, and, and and they were actually attacking him and and, and yeah. on the forum you know main, mainly because of the fact he holds on the the church building thing which you know I don't agree with the whole church building thing, uh because you know. Uh, because I do find that Cooley can can be can be kind of legalistic when it comes to the whole church building thing. Like he kind of he kind of is a little bit idolatrous towards the whole local church thing, you know. Because it, like he makes no yeah. le, le, like if you can't find a local church, then you like you're, you're, you have a problem, or you should just pick up and move to where you can find a local church. You know, he has he is a little bit legalistic when it comes to that. But you know, yeah. they actually were were saying that oh he's five one c three he's five one c three. Well, if they actually bothered to listen to any of his sermons, he's vehemently against five one c three. So they're they're just throwing out accusations against him that are not true without even like bothering to do the research. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's um one of those things. It's a bit of a conjecture. Like they're not meant to say certain things. Like if they're five zero one three c, they're meant to sort of toe the line. With what yeah. they have to do, what the government wants them to do, yeah. Which I don't um, exactly. It can't be a mirror image of what the government wants you to be. I think that if um, a church is made up of people, then it's the people inside the church that decide inevitably what what goes. You know what what yeah. needs to be said and what to be adhered yeah. to. And, and that, that was my criticism of the new, new IFB because supposedly the, the steadfast Baptist church was an independent church. So why is Anderson coming in and calling shots for them? I mean, it should have, should have been the congregation that votes for a new pastor. You know, why does Anderson, who is, who passes a church in a different state, get to come in and choose the pastor for them? And and the congregation have no no say or no opportunity to vote on it because and well, because Anderson's already picked the pastor for them. And it, you know, 
So it's like that's that's my thing too. Is that it? You know, it showed that this new IFB movement was not really independent. It was just this steadfast Baptist Church was not independent. It was just simply an arm of Anderson's cult. Because if they were truly independent, you know, they they would just vote on a new pastor. They wouldn't, you know, need to have Anderson pick a yeah. pastor for them. Yeah, it'd be a uh, it'd be simple as that. They'd be able to vote for whatever you know. Yeah, new pastor. You know what they're going to have also, for um, yeah. the tea. And also the thing of too, well, the whole thing so- of the whole thing of satellite churches. You know, it's like you know, chapter book, chapter and verse, please. I can't. You know, where 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 are satellite churches? You know, like in scripture, I, yeah. I, I can't. I mean, I mean, that's the whole thing too. Is it because suppose, supposedly Fannin was a was a satellite you know church or whatever? And it's funny too because if you're training a pastor, why is he over a thousand miles away? You know, it's like wouldn't you want to be a little bit closer to him? Because you know, I, I just find it a bit odd too. I mean, you know. I I, I, yeah. I just I just always had a problem with the whole satellite church thing because it's like, you know, I, I don't know I, I just found that a little bit weird and I just couldn't find any scripture to back up the whole thing of satellite churches. Nah, that's the thing. I don't I don't remember any scripture saying satellite churches per se. Yeah. Or what's what's another word for satellite? I suppose like branch churches, branches of um, the vine or something. Would yeah. Be another way of saying. Yeah, that that, yeah, that too. Little, but but the thing of the yeah. whole church building thing, you know, I I used to be against like I personally my sense in the whole church building thing is that, you know, I personally see no problem with meeting in a building, and the reason why I say that is because let me pull the verse of scripture actually. Uh, this is and this is actually I was actually looking through when I came across these verses, I actually it, it kind of made me change my opinion on the whole yeah. uh, with the whole church building thing is that. Uh, this is Acts 13 verses 1 to 3. This is when uh, Paul gets ordained into ministry. And, and yeah. I noticed I noticed the very what was that? Jay, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but share your screen, John. Oh, oh yeah, share my screen. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll oh, yeah. do that. Anytime. Yeah. Uh, share screen. Okay, there we go. Uh, there we go. Is it this? Oh, it's like still figuring this whole thing out. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so is it sharing? Okay, there we go. So this is uh, Acts, and, and this and there's there was a couple other scriptures too, but like this is one of the scriptures that really kind of you know maybe take a softer stance in the whole church building thing. Uh, Acts thirteen verses one to three. Uh, now that we're in, now that we're look at this. Now that we're in the church. So wait a second. If they're in the church, that that would mean they're in they're in somewhere. If they're in the church. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger. Uh, I, I'm just not good at pronouncing some of these Greek names. I do apologize. Uh, Lucius and Cyrene and Manian, <laughs> again, Greek names, uh, which had yeah. been brought up with Herod, uh, Tadarak, and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work. Whereunto I have called them, and when they fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. So where did this happen? It said in the church that was at Antioch. Well, if you're going to be in the church, that would mean yeah. you're probably in a building somewhere. That's what it strongly indicates. So That's I mean, true. yeah, I was thinking because how how can you be in the church if if it's just simply like you're and, and and it's not I'm not saying the church isn't the body of Christ. I'm just saying that the church could also be like. You're meeting in a building so it, you can't be in the church if you're like you know out in the field somewhere you know like in the church does indicate that they were, they were in a building they could have been in a building somewhere you know yeah. uh, stop sharing it's a literal church building that's what i believe yeah yeah because because you can't be because again you're in the church what well, if you're if you're in the church that's the building you know I had a look at um, yeah. I did a Google search on Antioch because that's where we were first called Christians. I looked at it on Google Maps. It's called by a different name, which I can't remember. But there's a cave there, and apparently it was where they used to meet the early Christians. But now, guess what's been built on top of it? What? A Catholic building. Why am I not surprised? Oh, I was Why am gonna... I not surprised? <laughs> not surprised. 
amazing shocker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that's the thing yeah, too, well, is that, you know, the, is that I, I actually watched a, uh, or saw a picture of supposedly the oldest church in the world. It's a Catholic church. You know, it's not, it's not a Bible believing church. It's, it, 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 like essentially, because what Roman Catholicism is, all it is is just simply, simply just repackaged Greco-Roman paganism. So, like a Catholic church is essentially just a Greco-Roman pagan temple repackaged. That's all it is. Yeah, a pagan temple. That's yeah. It. I, I, I mean, and, like in, uh, yeah. It's like they're worshiping Mary. They're really worshiping, like we were saying before, worshiping Satan in disguise. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. Is that you know, the thing is too. I just I love it when they when they oh we're not worshiping Mary. Um, excuse me. When you're bowing when when you're bowing down before statues of her, pointing holy water on her, burning incense unto her, that is worship by by biblical standards. That's worship. So I mean, they can deny it all they want, but they are worshiping her by biblical standards. You know, they they may not think they're worshiping her, but by scriptural standards, they're worshiping her. And and if they tried that back in ancient Israel, they would have probably got in trouble for idolatry. Oh, sure. Catholics like to play with words. Yeah, uh, I have said I have said to Catholics uh, via my keyboard that they worship Mary contrary to Scripture, and then they turn around and say, "Oh, well, we only venerate Mary." Oh, so, uh, you Google know what's funny? Venerate, oh, uh, and and I suppose you can guess. I hate to use the word guess, but you can guess what the word venerate means. What it means worship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's good. Here's the funny part. I, I was actually on a Catholic Instagram page, and I actually saw two Catholics arguing over whether they worship Mary. One of the Catholics was like, "Yes, we do worship Mary," and the other Catholic was like, "No, we don't. We worship God." So they're actually arguing over who, whether they worship Mary or not. So it's like they don't, they don't even agree with each other. Some of them think they do. Some of them will deny it. But it's yeah. like it's like it's like seriously, when you're bowing down before statues of her, when you're burning incense and putting holy water on her, you are worshiping her by 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 scriptural standards. That is worship. I mean, it's oh, like and, and, and it, it's like I, I like like it's the fact that they, the fact that they even deny it just shows they don't read their Bibles. Because like you read Deuteronomy four, you know, you read uh, Exodus twenty verse four to five. You read you know, you read Leviticus twenty six one. Like they're they're worshiping her, you know. And it's yeah, funny too, how, how they call her the Queen of Heaven. Was well, like the only Queen of Heaven in the Bible was was a pagan Babylonian deity in Jeremiah forty four. So it's like you know, why, why would they give yeah. her a title like that? And to say that Mary was sinless as well as a blasphemy. Yeah, only Jesus is sinless. Woman. Yeah, exactly. Only Jesus is sinless. God. Yeah. He's God, yeah. Mary, Mary's not God, and and, and of course their, their 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 stupid argument or their foolish logic of well, uh, Mary's the mother of God because uh, Jesus is God. She gave birth to Jesus. No, she gave birth to Jesus in his physical body. She did not give birth to God. You know, that's a stupid yeah. line of reasoning. That's right. Because yeah, Jesus they, exists. They're trying to put Jesus. Them. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a, 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 a picture here of the Brian Denlinger crew. I hope you'll forgive me for it, but this really does illustrate what they're like. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, pretty, that is pretty accurate. <laughs> a lot of them, and I've said this before, uh, I'm not an expert on grammar, English, and all that sort of stuff. I do believe that a lot of those people who follow Brian cannot read for themselves so they rely on brian to read the bible <laughs> too, and then give them an understanding of it and they don't get the i mean brian in fairness to him does tell people to get the king james bible out but i don't believe most of them can read and, and this, this is evident yeah. of the fact that a lot of the a lot of the channels that you know came out of brian's call the fact that a lot of them just Im imitate and emulate brian and just copy what brian says just shows they don't think for themselves you know a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of what they, like, they come up with and, you know, preach in their sermons, a lot of it is just simply, like, just repackaged from Brian Dillinger's sermons. That's all it is. Yeah. 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 Oh. There go those seagulls again, Bob. <laughs> well, you can hear them, can you? <laughs> yeah, they're loud that, as well. Uh, Bob, uh, put that picture of Aaron Deering back on the screen. That, that was kind of funny. <laughs> that, that that is actually pretty <laughs> accurate. I, I like how it has his face with like the the Denlinger 
Nicholas and the, the JT's book or whatever there. You know? Yeah. It's got a Brian Denling of Scapio on there. Yeah, he, he's uh he, he's an, he's an ordained cardinal and well was ordained. I guess he got excommunicated now, but but he was a ordained cardinal in the the Brian Dillinger cult, and he had, I you know I, I guess apparently if, if Brian Dillinger declared somebody lost, Aaron Dillinger would actually visit heaven and pluck the guy out, take you know rip open God's hand and take the guy out of God's hand. You know I, I guess I would, or maybe uh, go to the book of life and get some white out and just wipe it off the book of life or whatever. I don't know. We were talking yeah. this, this earlier, John. <coughs> the lack of critical thinking with this book, the Jesuit conspiracy, which is fine. I mean, you can or you can buy books on the Jesuits and things like that. The Engineers of Hell. I can't remember the exact title. Yeah. But this book was written by a Jesuit, John. <laughs> See. Um, yeah. A monster in the Catholic so called church. So, yeah. so basically, by buying that book, he's basically giving money to a Jesuit, essentially. Yeah, yeah I was suspicious of that. I mean, I, I, bought this, I bought this book off Amazon. It's actually a picture uh, version of Alexander Hislop's The Two Babylons that has uh, pictures oh, yeah. in it. So yeah. Got a link to it, John. I, uh, I did uh, read. Go, go ahead. I, I read uh, The Two Babylons some years ago, right? I've got about two thirds of the way because it's just absolutely crammed with information. I mean, he goes right into it. Alexander Hislop, but it, it, people do have to be careful that they don't get the abridged version. They need to get the 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 one that he actually wrote rather than what somebody sort of supposedly abridged later on to water down what Hislop was saying. Yeah. And the thing is, you can you can see why Catholics hate the book so much because because it, it totally exposes their system as just basically repackaged paganism. Basically. I mean, pretty much pretty much all the like like in, in this book, he, like his thought pretty much shows that pretty much all the core doctrines of, of Catholicism were borrowed from paganism, basically from Babylon. Yeah, yeah, essentially, but not just Babylon, but like other like Hinduism and, and what else? Uh, yeah, uh, like like uh. A Roman religion and, and you know Egyptian religion. So it's like, I mean, I was like in my video, I, I did a video on um the pagan origins of uh, baptismal regeneration. And I actually read an excerpt from his uh, the two Babylon showing that the the doctrine of having your sins washed away by baptism was borrowed from from Hinduism and other religions. That, that and as well, yeah, it's a classic work, John. Have you got a link to that book if it's not a, a, a hindrance? Or I, I bought it off Amazon. I'll post it. Oh, right. like Post a link in the description. The funny thing yeah. too is that I didn't even know this, this was a picture version. I just bought it because it was like you know I, I figured it, it was it was the best offer I could find. And when I when I found yeah. it like oh cool it's a picture version. Yeah. Uh, I'll just pull up my Amazon page. Uh, I also have a couple other books too that are, are pretty interesting. I yeah, actually have. Go away. Uh, oh, uh, this is an excellent book to get, John. Uh, um, I'm not trying to pester you to get it. New Age versions by Gail Ripplinger, which I do have, and this one. Yeah. On the new so-called versions, the Baphomet books, I call them now. I actually got this really interesting book. It's actually a really good book about uh, about. Um, it's called uh, it's called Terror in the Night: The uh, Clan's Campaign Against the Jews. It's actually a very interesting book about uh, the Ku Klux Klan and 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 their campaign against basically Jewish people in the 1960s and it, it, it basically goes into um uh it basically goes into the story of, of some young Christians who were like very fervent in their faith and 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 basically um were like it, it goes through a couple of different events but it basically shows how the clan essentially blamed the Jews for uh like the civil rights movement and and it mentions how in 1967 like the clan bombed the synagogue and and were like targeting jews more often but it, it's a it's a very interesting book it's called uh uh terror in the night the clan's campaign against the jews and it's uh it's, it's a pretty good read i mean it shows it, it shows that like back in the 1960s it was common for christians to basically hate jewish people pretty much yeah that's always a bad sign, really. Yeah. If they hate the Jewish people, not all Jews are Zionists. Not every Zionist is Jewish. Yeah. It's the Talmudic Jews that 
we have to be careful of, extremely careful of. Those are the ones that Paul warned about the most, the Talmudic Jews. Yeah. 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 The only the only difference I would say, and I suppose there are other differences, but the only real differences between true Torah Jews and the Christian is that we know the name of the Messiah and they don't yet. Yeah. And, and the fact that who have Torah Jews, they accept the Torah, but they just don't reject the, they don't accept the New Testament, which is Talmudic Jews. They they accept the Talmud and they, they claim to accept the Torah, but the Talmud actually like supersedes the Torah in some cases. So that that's another difference too. But uh, uh, I mean, uh, the thing, the thing is too is that you know, uh, the thing is is that like you know I, I sometimes criticize you know Judaism, but it's like when I go after Judaism, I'm going after it as a religion. I'm not going after them as a racial group because I support them. I support them racially, but like religiously, I don't agree with, with what they believe. You know. No, I understand that, John. Yeah. 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 Cool. So the thing is, is that when I see Jews, I'm not referring to them as racial. I'm referring, I'm referring to religious Jews, who the ones who hate and blaspheme Jesus Christ. You know. That, yeah. that kind of thing but uh yeah but it's a uh, i'm trying to find but basically it's um sorry, i'm trying to find the there's there's a part of the book i was trying to find i forget i lost the bookmark to it but it, it basically shows how um essentially that it, it was a common belief that the jews were behind the, the civil rights movement and that they're like you know trying to they destroy white Christian America or whatever. And then, you know, how essentially how the clan consisted of a lot of, you know, Christians who did, you know, fear God, but then they, they, they kind of got into the whole Jewish conspiracy type stuff and, and blaming the Jews for everything and, and that kind of stuff. I think they got infiltrated, but then he even saw the KKK, uh, a, a Masonic, I think. Well, I think what happened was is that, is that like originally, like, I think what Eric Phelps says is that like, like, like before, before like the mid 1900s the clan was actually very protestant very christian and that they, they used to go after the catholic church used to go after the vatican but then but then eventually they got they they, they when they re-emerged they, they were masonic and they're fascist and and, and and basically basically they kind of turned away from the catholics and went after jews more basically but well oh yeah, here here is the part i wanted i wanted to, to find out but um this is on uh page 68 where it's um uh, it's it's talking about how there's supposedly like a, a recorded conversation between two clan members, and uh, it, it basically was talking about how they're debating whether to, they should go after the the synagogue or whatever. And, and and at one point they're talking about the the children in the synagogue, and it says one of the clansmen says to hell with that, uh, and he says little Jew bastards grow up and to be big Jew devils kill them while they're young. So that was the kind of mentality the clan had towards Jews. It was they all kill them while they're young, that kind of thing, killing Jewish children this way. And uh, because because they, they truly believe that the Jews were behind the civil rights movement, the Jews were behind, you know, basically anything bad that was happening to white Christians, basically. Yeah. Yeah, they're being lied to. Yeah. Can you show a cover of that book, John, please? Yeah. Was... Yeah, it's called... Uh, called terror in the night the clan's campaign against the jews yeah by yeah. jack nelson yeah but basically you know uh like i, I do believe there is definitely like a, a a campaign against you know white people out there but like who is really pulling the strings you know a lot of these high level jews are you know have knighthoods from the vatican a lot of them you know are, are you know have ties to jesuits so really you know a lot of these jews that are like you know hating white people are you know have ties to jesuits so really is the jesuits that they ought to be going after because they're the ones who are really pulling the strings to to this campaign against white christians essentially yeah they're being used as front men scapegoats so we yeah up, the ignorant end up blaming the jews falsely yeah ignore the jesuits yeah that's the thing is that you know I, i'm on gab <laughs> i'm on gab and like, like a lot of white supremacists on gab and and, and like they, they do point out how there is definitely like a lot of you know kind of like like bias against white people there is definitely like a lot of you know uh like you could say racism against white people but then they blame the jews for the tale the jews are behind this the jews are, are, are against white people the jews are, are controlling the, the media the jews are are you know you know turning you know going against white people the jews are trying to bring down the white race well you look at all these jews who are doing that you know a lot of them either have papal knighthoods or a lot of them are even are jesuit trained themselves so it's like like who is really the one pulling the strings it, it's really 
I mean, I mean, if they were to focus more on the Jesuits, you know, and I've, I've tried, I've tried to, you know, talk to some of them and say, hey, you know, like a lot of these Jews are just simply like court Jews for the Jesuits. A lot of them are submitted to the Jesuits, and and, and they'll 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 call me. They'll say that, oh, you know, I I've been deceived, and and, and they'll try to say, well, the, like some of them have told me some of these white supremacists. They've said, well, the Jesuits uh, are controlled by the Jews. I'm like, uh, no, they're not. It's actually the other way. Around. It's actually it's actually the other way around. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, people don't think about it sort of critically. I mean, you know, could the Jews really have got to those positions of power in the media and Hollywood and wherever, uh, unless they'd actually been officially sanctioned, uh, allowed to buy the Jesuit order? They couldn't yeah. have done it. I don't really think they could have done it. And, and, and here's the thing, too, is that, like, you know, I like me personally. I I do I do kind of I do kind of identify with the whole white nationalism thing. But like me personally, I find that a lot of the leaders of the whole white supremacist movement are frauds. A lot of them, and, and you know, I I just think too this kind of ties into what Eric Phelps says about the whole white power structure of how the Jesuits are just, you know, how, how the Jesuit how a lot you know because I do believe some of these white supremacists are generally concerned about you know the the well being of white people by white people. But I think a lot of the high high leaders of the movement are frauds and, and the reason why i say that is because you know uh, before i got saved i was actually involved in the whole you know alt-right white supremacist thing and you know a lot of the leaders would would use these like fake stories about themselves to climb the ranks like there was one example of this uh this alt-right white supremacist named eli mosley who who basically who claimed to be a, a veteran from Iraq and Afghanistan? And on one podcast, he actually on one alt right alt right podcast, he was actually bragging about you know how much fun he had shooting Muslims and shooting black people and how he had so much fun watching you know Muslim brains get splattered over the wall. Well, then it turns out later the New York Times did a documentary on him, and it turns out he was never deployed in the first place. So it so it was not true. He did he never had any time for your shooting Muslims because. He was never deployed in the first place, so he basically used a lie to, to climb the ranks. And, and and there's and there's also another guy called um uh, what's his name uh, Mike Enoch. There's a guy called Mike Enoch who who has a podcast called the, the Daily Shoah and and show in Hebrew means Holocaust. And he basically has a podcast called the Daily Shoah, and he basically blames the Jews for everything that happens to the white race that's bad. And and basically he's like the most anti-Jew person in the white supremacist movement. But then when when they dox him, it turns out he's married to a Jew. You know, he's married to a Jewish wife that attends, you know, gay pride events and that kind of stuff. And and then so it's like, you know, a lot of them, I don't think they even believe this as like they believe in their hearts. I think a lot of them are just raised up by the Jesuits to just cause problems, you know, because if, if he actually believed that, you know, the Jews were supposed to take bringing down the white race, then it's like it's like, why would you be married to a Jewish woman? And, you know, and, and then and then she didn't. He, he didn't divorce her you know she she left him after it came out in the press that he's like a leading white supremacist you know so it's like i think a lot of them are just frauds i i think a lot of them don't actually believe what they say they're just doing this because they want to you know be popular among white people or something i don't know <laughs> yeah. but i mean i mean just think about that so like you have a podcast the, the daily show like you're talking like you're just going off with jews and how they hate white people but then you're, like you're married to a jew the whole time like you the whole time you're doing this you're married to a jewish person and it's like you know so it's like how do you claim you're advocating for white people when supposedly you're like when supposedly the jews are enemies of the white people so then you're married to someone who's supposedly an enemy of white people so how do you claim you're advocating for white people if that's the case it, it just you know it, well, it, a lot uh, of them are a lot of them are just frauds a lot of them uh, um, Jews, um, Jewish people, essentially white anyway, really. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the thing too. Is that you know, I, I that was that was kind of a problem I had with them for a while too. Is I'd ask them, wait a second, aren't aren't there like white Jews too? Because you know, the thing about Judaism is that it is a religion, but it's also a race too. But then there are you know, because they they kind of lump the religion in with the race, they kind of make it like one and the same. Which to me personally, I try to distinguish be between the racial, them racially and them religiously. But like, I'll say like, wait a second, aren't there, aren't there like uh, uh, people who follow Judaism that are like ethnically European? And, and they'll say, well, uh, they, they're they're crypto Jews or something like that. But it's like, you know, uh, I like, like me personally, I I've, met, I've had a hard time, you know, convincing some of them. That you know, a lot of these Jews that are bringing down white people are often just Jesuits controlled, and you know, I mean, pretty much every time I, I bring that up, the Jesuits, they always say, "Well, the Jesuits are controlled by the Jews, or the Jesuits have a lot of Jews in them, or the Jews created the Jesuits, or whatever that kind of thing." 
you know. So no. no, 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 no. There's no way. I mean, I think they might have let one in to, to prove the exception to the rule. But yeah. generally, if you're Jewish, you're never going to become a Jesuit. Never. Yeah. No, no. And, and the thing is, too, I, I've, I've, I've asked some of them, and, and I, I even tell them too that you know, I, like me personally, I, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with you know with white people having their own nation or like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. But like my, my thing is too, is that wh like one of my criticisms of, of a lot of the leaders of the movement as well is how a lot of them don't give any solutions to the, the supposed Jewish problem of anti-white racism. A lot of them just talk about, Oh, you know, the Jews do this, the Jews, do, the Jews are, are the problem, but then they don't give any solutions. I mean, it's like, you know, okay, so we've we've identified the supposed problem, but where's the solution? I mean, and then this Mike Enoch guy, his solution is, oh, I just want the government to give America to the white people. Well, it's like that doesn't just happen. You know, the government doesn't just give you things. Like, like you know, I mean, supposedly he's against communism. Well, you know, communism is where the government just gives you stuff. Well, if you're against communism, well, how come you're advocating for the government to just give you stuff? You know, so it's like they don't present any real solutions to the supposed problem of of Jewish anti-white racism. They, they just go off about how the Jews are, are the, the problem to white people. But then it's like, okay, give me some solutions. Come on, let's hear them. They, they never do, you know? So mm -hmm. that, that only furthers my, my opinion that I don't think, like a lot of the leaders, I don't think a lot of them actually believe this. They're just simply doing this to, you know, have a following. But like, oh, like some of the lower down ones, I think generally do believe that, you know, white people, and, and generally do care about white people. And if they've been misled to thinking that the Jews are the ones who are causing anti-white racism, when a lot of these Jews who are doing so are, you know, Jesuit controlled. Uh, but the, the higher up ones, I think are just total frauds or and or Jesuit controlled. Yeah. Yeah, Stalin was Jesuit trained. Yeah. yeah. And Stalin, Stalin mm -hmm. hated. And guess what? Guess what? Stalin blamed the Jews for for bringing down, you know, Russia and that kind of stuff. So, so it's a so because then a lot of these white supremacists will claim, well, the Soviet Union was controlled by the Jews. Well, if you look at the history, it actually wasn't. In fact, Stalin hated Jews. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I thought Stalin was like half Jewish or something. Well, well, like, they'll claim he was like, oh, he's a quarter, he's a quarter Jew. And it's funny too, because like when it comes to the whole Jewish control of communism, again, you know, all these Jews who control communism are are Jesuits. You know, they're Jesuit trained. So it's like again, who 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 is really behind communism? Because like like because these white supremacists, like they're anti-communist and and rightfully so, because you know communism is evil. But like, it's it's like they fail to realize that that or or maybe are willfully ignorant of the fact that all these these Jewish communists. Are, are you know Freemasons or Jesuits? So it's like it, it's like they, they always keep forgetting that that all roads lead to Rome. That yes, there are high level Jews, and yes, these high level Jews do hate white people, and they are trying to bring white people down. But then, you know who 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 do these high level Jews submit to? You know, so really, you know, it just I I think that a lot of them, you know, they they. They're, they're 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 not they're not realizing who the real enemy is they're they're basically naming a symptom of the problem which is court jews who are serving the jesuits but they're not actually naming the real source of the problem of you know anti-white racism that's rampant you know that's that's the whole thing yeah i, think, I think um yeah sorry well uh, i was gonna say david bowers made a comment there uh i don't think that's true david anyone who doesn't think like uh, okay first of all i've never said that anyone who doesn't think like me is a jesuit <laughs> oh, okay that, that was funny i, I mean it, it's funny because it's like i've never said that people who don't think like me are jesuits you know it's like no i mean i i, I, I think it, i was like that a lot when i was part of denlinger's cult but i've tried to just you know drop that or whatever yeah uh, yeah I mean, I don't think exactly like John. I don't think exactly yeah. like Coops or King's Table or, yeah. you know, I've got uh, my own thought life. I've got a mind of my own. Yeah. Uh, no, I disagree with John on a couple of things. Nothing salvific, particularly. I wouldn't have said so. Uh, and, and like I said too, I'm not part of any group. I'm not part of any call. I, I'm just just being the Holy Spirit. I'm I'm on my own, and I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm not part of. Is an any group, not part of any, you know, denial. Just, just me on my own, basically. 
are there no local fellowships where you are, John, that you would regard? Uh, there are most of them are just NIV reading, so I I, I yeah. don't pay, I don't go to them. Stay away, stay away. Yeah, yeah. It's a pity you couldn't go and visit um, Jeff Allen. He's on the. He's not that far from you, is he, John? Jeff uh, Allen. Yeah, a couple. It could be a couple hours. Yeah. I don't know. Is he, he's on the east. Uh, he's on the east coast, isn't he, Jeff? Yeah. I think so. Oh, so I, I was looking at one of the comments as hell for review by this David Bauer guy. He he was he was saying that I'm a, I'm a white segregationist, I'm a racist, I'm a closet anti-Semite. Yeah, no, I, I don't know who this I don't know who this David Bauer guy is, but I don't know. I, I, he might just be here that cause he might just be here that cause problems. I don't know. I haven't seen that other comment. Uh, David Bauer, he is no relation to Max Bauer. I should admit. Make that clear. Uh, uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Well, I can't see the other comment that he's it, it, it says it was held for. It, there's two comments that are being held for review. I'm just I'm just looking at them right now. I can't see them. Oh, I, I could just uh, show them. I'll just do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't know who this David Bauer guy is, but he could. He, I mean, he he looks like he's just. I don't know. I don't know what his deal is. I, I've been, I've never seen him before. So it's like I, I don't know. What, I don't know who he is. That's all I can see there, John. Uh, oh, okay. Can you see that? Oh, um, I I just approved of the two comments. He was um, they were hidden. I'm actually on the actual YouTube page with the actual chat. So. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll yeah. So if yeah. you're not a if if you're lost, then you must be a Satanist automatically. Is that what he's trying to say? What? Well, wait, he he he, but he basically is trying lost, to say that then you're a Satanist by default. <laughs> well, he 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 basically trying to say that like I'm saying that anyone who disagrees with me is lost. You know, like um. Yeah, I, I, I mean, if I did say that, I'd probably repent of that. I, I just can't remember a time me saying that before, like, after leaving Brian's school. If, if I did ever say that, then you know, I'll, I'll public, I'll publicly repent of that. If I did, if I did ever say that. Yeah, because you don't come across as the sort of guy to say that. That's the thing. Yeah, it sounds like something Ken would say. Well, like, the, the uh, thing is too is that is that a lot of the fending our crew. You know what? Still, kind of like go after me, and like the, they'll they'll kind of, they'll say things about me, like oh, I, I still say everyone who disagrees with me is lost. You know, it's like um, that that's the thing too, because you know, because because you know, since leaving the Brian call, I haven't like joined up with the whole Fenninger group, or whatever. You know, that's the whole thing. So they they still you know will say things about me, but I I don't really care. I I don't really pay much attention to. It. I just kind of do my own thing. You know. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't pay too much attention to it. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll drag you down. Yeah. Plus, like I have better things to do. You know, it's like it's like because uh, essentially, what what he's accusing me of is essentially just still believing like Brian Dunlinger that everyone who doesn't think like me is lost. It's like, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, can you see that yeah. screen there, John? What screen? I can see the screen. Yeah. Uh, the, what I'm sharing in the comments there. That. Yeah. I'm on the YouTube page there. Yeah. Uh, there, there are certain words blocked on my channel. Oh, okay. Naughty words. So that might be why the comment hasn't showed up. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this David Bauer guy's calling me a racist. Uh, David Bauer, do you even know what the definition of racism is? Okay, the, the, the Merriam-Webster definition of racism is the belief in racial supremacy. Okay, when have I ever said that my race is superior? So it's like, by definition, I'm not a racist. But, you know, you're entitled to your opinion. What about this one? There's only one what? human race. That's there's only one race, and that's the human race. We're all descendants yeah. of Adam and Eve, and yeah, um, and there's only skin color which separates us. Um, so that, that's the thing. Who said? Is that one of his comments? No, that's one of my comments. <laughs> oh, okay. that there's only one oh, okay. race, and that's the human race, and we're all only separated yeah, I, by I, skin color. 
I would agree in part. I, I, we definitely all are descended from Adam. I, I think I, I think the thing of two is that the whole thing of, of race, I, I think some people take it a bit too far and kind of say that, you know, like, I don't know. I, I just think like, like like skin color is kind of like the most of it. That, like, like, you know, like, like me personally, like, you know, I'm not like obsessed with race or anything. I'm not like, you know, uh, what's the whole thing? But like, yeah, we're all descended from Adam. We're all, you know, son, sons and daughters of, of Wow, uh, Adam and Eve. I don't know why I'm blanking out on the names for a second, but yeah, we're all sons of of, um, of Adam and Eve. So it's like you know, we're all descended from Adam. I, I just think my, my my personal opinions is that I just think we should stay within the balance of our habitation. But but that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, skin color really is just uh, melanin. Yeah, that is true. Some, yeah, uh, you know. That's all. It's about climate, local food. Like, like the whole thing of skin color too is that you know is, is that is that I I think that that some you know Christians who get involved in the whole white movement, I I think they get to the point where they care more about preserving their race than they do about serving God. Which I think you know I don't agree with that I think that serving God should be your main priority, and that don't let like fighting for your race you know take over preserving God or, or serving God. That that's you know the whole thing too. Yeah, God will take care of the rest. Yeah, that's the thing. If we've got faith yeah. in God, we've got to have faith in the Holy Ghost within us to take care yeah. of things we need to take care yeah. of. And, and, and the thing oh. is too is that is the thing is too is that when it comes to preserving the race, really the only race that will that will be preserved in the end is the is the Jews because there's uh, twelve thousand from each of the twelve tribes. So. He says, uh, one of the comments held to review, you call everyone who disagree with, who you call everyone you disagree with a Satanist, you liar, you've called me one numerous times. I, I, I've i never seen, okay, I've never seen this David Bauer guy on my channel. If, well, it's, yeah, maybe, particular. What was that? Tribes. Sorry, you, you, were, you were cutting out. Who was, what was that? Zinquo. Question. Oh, so, so are you, like your audio. Oh, your audio is cutting out. Uh, sorry. Wait, I think. Oh, oh, oh so, okay. My headphone jack was not fully in. That's why my headphone jack was like half out. That's why. Oh well. Sort of break, breaking up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're still breaking up. Yeah. Well, yeah, this David Bauer guy, I think he's just a troll. I don't know who he is. He could just be a troll or whatever. He's usually been okay with me, John. Um, yeah. I've never seen this guy before, so like, I have no idea who he is. So, I mean, I've never seen I've never seen him on my channel or anything, so it's like, I don't know. But the only thing anybody could know about you, John, is what you've said on your live stream. Yeah. And the fact that you're Canadian. That's about all I know about you. Yeah. Uh, really, I've had plenty of conversations with you yeah so i wouldn't call you race i mean there is a difference between racism and racialism yeah uh racism is a disgusting blasphemous thing racialism i can partly understand that somebody would want to stay within their racial group yeah without advising others doing the same thing yeah, that's the, that's the thing too. Is that you know, ra racism it would would be me saying, "Hey, my race is better, and we should go eliminate other races." You know, I, I've never said that. You know, yeah. like me, someone like me, I'm just saying that. Hey, I want to stick to my own kind. You know, blacks should be with their own kind. You know, uh, Arabs should be yeah. with their own kind. You know, and and we all should be we should all be treated equally. You know, that, that's 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 well, not racism. Even sort of, black people agree with you on that, John. Yeah, there are some blacks that would agree with me. There are some breaking you know, up for, for a while. What was your signal's fading. There, he's still there, Coops. He says he says he's been on my channel numerous times. Are you delusional and a liar? Okay, then how come I've never got one notification for your comments? 
if he's if this David Bauer guy's been on my channel like numerous times, I've never got I've never gotten a single notification for his comments. So I've never seen any of his comments on there, John. Yeah. So I go, I, yeah. your videos when they come up, I go over uh, unless it's late at night or early morning, very early morning. Uh, I've never seen him comment on any of your videos, as far as I know. And the thing is, too, is that if he's if he is supposedly been on my channel numerous times, I would have gotten at least one notification, which I've not gotten. I've not gotten a single notification. So, uh, I this David Bauer, I'm afraid you're the one that's lying because I've not seen you on my channel once. Oh, unless he doesn't. Unless he means he's been to your channel, but he hasn't commented. I don't know. Oh. I've never seen any comments he's made. Oh, I don't know. I've got no beef with him particularly. I don't like people who. I don't like it when people come and channel and make level false accusations. I don't I don't need it. Um I've never thought of John well I mean some people can interpret it that way. John's not a nasty person, he's not racist. I don't think so. I, I actually have friends I actually have uh friends who are like basically every single race, so it's like if I'm a racist I'm pretty bad at it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a friend who's uh, from Persia. I, I have a friend who's like from e East Asia, and we and we actually get along quite fine. So it's like if I'm if I'm a racist, then again, I'm I'm doing a pretty bad job at it. But yeah, again, yeah. I've ne I, I've never seen this deal about I have no idea who he is. So it's like I, I I'm I'm new, so that's all. That's all. all right. Uh, one problem I've noticed in communicating with people, John, about yourself or whatever you believe. People always find an excuse not to believe you. You'll never be able to prove yeah. the truth about you. Yeah. Not that you need to to me. I, I'm, you know, I've got no problem with you, John, really. Uh, but, I mean, the fact is, regardless of how much you say to people or explain, it's never going to be good enough. Yeah, I've, I've seen that in many times. That's you know the thing. Uh, I mean, you've had that with Catholics, I'm sure you are. I know for a fact you have, because I've talked with plenty of them myself. You'll just get accused of all sorts. Well, I, I've gone back and forth with the Catholics, like, like nonstop. I posted, like, like so many scriptures to them that, like, contradict their system, and they just won't budge, you know. So yeah. it, there's, just, there's no point. I mean, I would just post, like, verse after verse after verse after verse that, like, blatantly contradicts their their, their what they're saying. And, and, and yet they just won't budge. They'll always reference, oh, well, so, so, so and so saint said this, or the church fathers, or whatever, or, or, you know, this saint said that, or whatever, you know. They never actually deal with the scripture. They just go about, I mean, uh, pretty much all the big Catholic Instagram pages, pretty much you look at their posts, like 99% of it is like quotes from church fathers or quotes from saints. And like very seldomly do they ever post any scripture. It's always just quotes from this saint or quotes from this pope or whatever, you know. I mean, I mean, very, very seldomly do they do I ever see that? Like, like do I ever? Go ahead. It, sorry, it's Adam Hartley. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's okay, Adam. As long as you play with him and all that sort of thing, you know, he's okay. Yeah. I believe he's a saved man. You know, we have had a little bit of sort of. Oh. So, so, I, 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 I was just thinking of back to when that that uh, what's his name. Uh, Oh, I don't know why I'm blanking out on his name. Uh, King Shable did that live stream on me. I mean, me, me personally, I mean, I personally don't care what people say about me. I can, you know, I just kind of, whatever, you know. Uh, but, uh, oh, oh, you're right. It is Adam Hartley. I thought, oh, I thought it was the same channel because it had the same color logo. Oh, it, oh, it is Adam Hartley. I just noticed that right now. Yeah, but I, I, I was just thinking of, of um, back when King's Table did that stream on me or whatever. Uh, yeah, you know. Well, I mean, whatever, you know, it's like to to each his own. Yeah. Uh I've had Linda on here. She was on here uh sort of arguing as it were with uh, Watchman D. Yeah. Well, the thing about Watchman D is that you know people will say, "Oh, you should debate him." The reason why I, I kind of don't want to is because there's no point. I mean, he, like he won't he won't change, he won't budge. So it's like, and plus two, you know, th there's the whole thing of how uh, of, of how you know I, I just don't see any point in like debating somebody if if like they they just won't 
you know, it's not because I'm scared or I'm trying to run away. It's that, you know, I've seen how he just twists scripture and how he just, you know, how you answer him. He just like finds anything he can to try to butcher the verse. I mean, there's no point in debating somebody like that who just, who, who, who just won't admit to being wrong. So I, that's why I personally, what was that? I don't think it do any harm to go in a private Skype with him and just have a discussion, see how it goes. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay with having a discussion, but like that, like a debate or whatever, I personally, you know, wouldn't do because I just don't see any point in that. Uh, okay. Should but I, I, I've, I've talked to him over email. I've talked to him over uh, what's oh, right. that? Okay. Uh, Proton Mail, whatever that, that site is called, you know, yeah. and, and you know that's the whole thing. And I, I just think of too the whole thing of the whole thing of debating. The reason why I don't like debating is because like what a, what a debate is essentially is um, essentially two guys fighting for for the audience's entertainment. Basically, that's the whole thing. And, and it, it's uh, you know, no. it, it's contention. It, you know, it's cont was that sorry, John debate. I looked up that word annoyingly. Um, the word debate means to make someone less angry <laughs> about <the> opposition. <laughs> That's the idea of a debate. Uh, an argument isn't actually what people think it is. It sounds like something really negative. An argument is actually making a proposition or a claim and backing it up with premises, syllogistic reasoning. Yeah. Uh, and that's all an argument is in the truest sense. Yeah. But I, I, I'd say, go ahead. Uh, from you know, it's just about two people uh, proposing an argument, a claim backed up with premises, in order to make the other person less angry about their position. So, well, I think it's, I think it's the reason why because I've seen I've seen some like some political debates between uh, various. It was actually by a guy named uh, Halsey English, who was, a, who was actually a pretty pretty right wing uh, Jewish radio host, actually debating yeah. Mike Enoch. And, and you know the Mike Enoch, the guy who's like anti-Jew, and then he like he's married to a Jew. Well, uh, the debate between Halsey and Mike Enoch, it, I mean, it was pretty heated. It got to the point where it's like the moderator was like the moderator. I mean, it, it was part of a series called Blood Sports, and they're called Blood Sports because the debates get so heated that the debaters look like they look like they're wanting to kill each other, basically, <laughs> like like literally. So it's like they're called they're called Blood Sports, basically, and it's like it's it's like you know. Like, like it's like basically it's like so he did it's like let, let the rivers flow of blood basically but but yeah. um uh and and there's another time where where he where this uh Halsey guy was like debating this other guy called what's his uh nick fuentes or this this what's his name nick you, you've heard of, you've heard of nick fuentes right you've heard of him have you, have you ever heard of him hello Did my audio cut out again? Sorry, John. I accidentally muted my mic. He's still there, bro. Yeah, I'm still there. Yeah, so I was saying, like, if, like, have you ever heard of Nick Fuentes? Yeah, I have. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. basically, there was one time where Halsey was actually uh, debating Nick Fuentes, and, and like, literally, like, I'm not even joking. Fuentes actually pulled out a knife on, on the debate and was like, was like brandishing it on the debate, and he ends up cutting his finger. And he's he's like bleeding on the debate. Like he holds up his bloody finger to the camera, and he's like, "Oh, I got I got to get a bandage." So it's like that, that's how he did. It. That's how he did it. He got one time. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something out of the Old Testament concerning um, the prophets of Baal. <laughs> yeah, it, it, except, except except with this time, Flint has cut himself by accident, not on purpose. I mean, right. like, just think about that. He's so angry, he pulls like a hunting knife. It's like, oh, just brandishing it because they're like screaming at each other, and like the moderator like can't even get a word in. And then he actually cuts himself. Like the thumbnail of the debate is Fuentes holding his bloody finger to the camera. <laughs> yeah, Renee Roland, you you you've heard of her, haven't you, John? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Oh, she was in Watchman D's live stream the other day, the weekend. Yeah. Being extremely rude, I you know. <laughs> about his daughter in the yeah, comment that's the thing too like when you're debating somebody like stick stick to the issue don't like attack their family personally like just stick to the oh, issue that's the whole thing mistake yeah yeah oh well i mean but but it's like you know i mean you can see why they call blood sports because like like flint has literally <laughs> cut his finger blood coming out because you guys call blood sports you know but um but basically <laughs> It, it was just funny too because like the debate between Halsey and Mike Enoch was that like, um, like, like basically Halsey had, like, like like just had to keep saying, "Okay, let me finish speaking, let me finish speaking," because like like 
Mike Enoch just kept just like rambling on and on, and how he just kept saying, "Wait, let me finish talking." So it's like had to deal with him like a little child almost. Yeah, I would be very reluctant to start a debate channel. Um, I've seen a few <laughs> channels that do that. Oh. Uh. There, there was one debate where Halsey debated this uh, this Muslim girl called uh, uh, what's her name? Oh, I can't remember her name. It was uh, Syrian girl. That's her, that's her name. Just, just like Muslim. Oh yeah. 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 Well, but, well, basically, he was he was debating her, and like, I mean, uh, remember that time when Mega Daily was like, you know, going off? Well, this debate was like Mega Daily, but like ten times worse. Basically. <laughs> oh, that's John. John, that's not possible. Surely oh, not. Oh no. Oh, oh no! oh no! Oh no! No, no! It, it, it's it's. <laughs> I'll send you the link. It, it, it's like if you thought that was bad, you should like. I mean, I mean, th like this, th this takes to a whole new level. Which, uh, uh, healthy. What's her name? Healthy versus Syrian girl. I mean, I mean, like I was listening to it at work, and like I just couldn't stop. I just I was dying laughing that my boss actually asked, like, "You okay?" And I was like, "But um, here, I think, oh, I think I found it." <laughs> Coops, Coops, I've put a link in. Come back in if you want to, brother. Oh, uh, here, where is it? Uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, here's, I think I found the link finally. Yeah, it's on uh, Killstream.net live. Pretty, pretty uh, accurate title. Killstream.net. Um. Oh, but so like you've heard of Syrian girl, I guess you've heard of her. Oh, I have, yeah, from somebody else, a guy called Ryan Dawson who blames the Jews for everything. <laughs> oh yeah, it's funny because Halsey Halsey actually debated Ryan Dawson too at one point, and and it, it's like it, it, yeah, it's funny too because like Ryan Dawson, I mean, basically, basically like the entire time Dawson sounded like he's half asleep the entire time, and like like the whole time Dawson would not even show his, his uh, Ryan Dawson too. would and, not even show. And, and, yeah, I think. I, it, your speaker's on. Okay, there we go. Have you got Coops? No. Basically, it's <laughs> your, your speaker. I can, I can hear myself in the background. I'm like, what? Um, oh, yeah. Is that right? Basically, so, so when Halsey was debating uh, Ryan Dawson, so it's like Ryan Dawson, like, like there was one funny part where like Halsey, like they were talking about the whole Iron Dome system in Israel, how that system where, um, so, uh, oh, Oh, it's David Bauer. Anyway, so um, Ryan Dawson, like he's talking about, they're talking about the whole um, the whole Iron Dome system. And, and at one point, like Dawson's saying, "Oh, it doesn't really work. It doesn't work." And how's he how's he brought up the point where he was actually one time in Israel on a balcony, and the Iron Dome system actually goes off, and he actually like saw it happening with his own eyes, and actually filmed it with the cell phone and posted it on YouTube. And 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 then and then Dawson's saying, "Well, the scientists say this," and how's like, "You did not see it happen. I actually saw it happen, and I filmed it on my phone." You know, and, and then Dawson was trying to act like the scientists are somehow more accurate than actually seeing it with your own eyes happen and work properly. You know, but yeah, well, when they were bombing Israel with their rockets from uh, Gaza, I was actually watching a live stream of that Iron Dome thing working. Yeah, I've seen videos of it working too. So it's like, it, it, it's like I, I don't know what what scientist uh, Dawson was referring to, but they don't seem to be. Accurate, especially when you're talking to a guy who's who's seen it with his own eyes, working and actually filmed it with his cell phone and posted it on YouTube. I mean, yeah. and it was funny too because at one point yeah. Halsey brought up a good point too, of how you know there really is no arguing for Israel because like that little Swiss cheese-sized land in the Middle East, you know, was fought by a war. Like they they picked up a gun, they beat the they beat the other side, they won it with guns in the war. So it's like you know it was won fair and square. They they won a war and they got the land. You know, and plus, I mean, that little Swiss cheese sized land is not even a little fraction of what God promised Israel in, in the Old Testament. So it's like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it is a mix yeah, of, it's a tiny bit, bit of, of yeah. land, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's like it's like a little Swiss cheese compared to like the the all the land God. I mean, you look at this whole this whole white supremacist conspiracy of oh, Greater Israel. Well, if you look at this Greater Israel conspiracy, it's actually just the full extent of the land that God gave to Abraham. Basically, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, sorry, I cut out. My internet's pretty crappy oh, sometimes. Okay. You can't be blamed for that. I know it I'm keeps coming in and out sometimes. I'm the, more than I'm more than internet. Happy. I'm more than happy to leave Mega Daily out of the conversation. Thank you. What about this oh, one? 
Oh, oh, she going through some. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, sorry. She's, uh, going, she's going through some tough times. Oh, I didn't, re- oh, I didn't realize that. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, what tough that. times? Oh, I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to hear that. That's, oh. That's too bad. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I wouldn't wish any ill yeah. upon her. Father die or something. We'll pray for it later. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, oh, uh, uh, where was that? Oh, darn! I lost the link. Darn it! Oh, oh, here, oh, here's the link. Found it. Where is it? How do I share? How do I share a link on this? You Oops. post it in private chat. I'll put it in the comments. Or you can right, yeah, I'll just do that. Yeah. Share screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, I'll just share the link. Uh, uh, there are private chat. So this, this is the debate, and it's like between Halsey and, and uh, Syrian girl. It's funny too because she's supposed to be a Muslim, but she doesn't. What's that? Wear the hijab or whatever. I just found that kind of interesting. Oh, it's not sure. Oh, it, oh it's she's in a hijab or she's not. Well, she 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 claims to be like a Muslim, but she doesn't like wear the hijab or anything. So I just find that kind of oh, interesting. She doesn't wear. It. Yeah, okay. she does. Yeah, they've got the selection. They can choose whether to wear it or not, I suppose. I, I, I think some factions of Islam, it's like like some factions will have you wear like the whole face covering. So others will, you know, be more lenient. Uh, I don't know. It, it really kind of varies on which like faction of Islam you follow, I think. I, I, yeah, like, I, know, I know like in Afghanistan, like they, like a lot of times they'll make you wear the whole like face covering. But like in other places, they, like you can just cover your hair or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. You would agree, yeah. though, the Catholics created Islam, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, and Catholics so, make their women wear veils in, in the mass, so it's like similar thing there. Oh, so it's sort of like people. nuns. Certain nuns wear a certain different habit, a nun well, habit. It, it's funny because if you actually if you actually like Google like to search up hijab biblical hijab is biblical, a lot of times like Muslims will compare like Catholic nuns. To, to Muslim hijabs and say it's very similar. So like they'll say that they'll say basically like how come you know uh, conservatives have such a big problem with Muslims wearing a hijab yet they have no problem with you know Christian nuns wearing their uniform. So it's like it's interesting they compare the two because it is very similar in how they dress. John. Oh yeah, for sure. John. Yeah, it must be hot in that in the summertime over there. Well, I've, seen, the I've, seen, I, I've gone to the beach with them on. A, I feel I feel bad for them because it's like they're so hot in that stuff, you know. Yeah, that's it. Especially if they're black, like black color. Well, yeah, um, I, I've seen I've seen some of them with a full black face covering. It's like you know. Yeah, no, but, the, but at, at, the, at the bright side too, at least at least they're dressed modestly. I mean, they're pretty much the only ones on the beach who are dressed modestly. Everyone else is dressed like a harlot, pretty much. Yeah, everyone's in bikinis and speedos yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, they're the only ones on the beach who are dressed modestly. Like everyone else is in those. those those filthy bikinis you know what i mean and some of the bikinis i've seen are like really really revealing but i even wonder like how are they even legal you know like it's, it actually gets to the point where it's like nudity almost yeah well that's the thing i wonder too like you think the surf guard the lifeguards would come in and say look you got to wear something a bit better than that or also the fact of too how the beach i go there's actually police officers that will patrol the beach how come they like i'm surprised they haven't said that hey you know like like you're, you know, like, like you're too revealing. You got to cover up a little bit. I mean, they, they don't say anything. I, I guess I don't know. The laws maybe have got more lenient. I guess or whatever. Yeah. yeah because you my wear like that, a string bikini or something yeah. nowadays or something. I mean, you know? Pretty much, you can expose like most of your chest if you're a woman, and like, like the yeah. police won't. The police like before the police would kind of tell you, hey, you got to you know cover up a little bit. But now the police will just kind of walk by and not even notice because the police officers they patrol the beach. Yeah. Well, it depends oh, well, what country you're in, too, you know. Yeah. Oh, Bob, what was yeah. your question? Uh, John, this comment here, uh, I just want to ask, and I'm not implying anything. Um, have you replied to this person's comments before? If if I did reply to his comments, I don't remember doing so. And, and if I did, it, it might have been on a different channel because it's like i don't i i because i i don't have i have adhd so i don't i don't have the best memory so i don't remember like every single channel i replied to if i did reply to his channel i probably just don't remember it 
And if I do remember, it may have just been on a different channel he was using, or he may have had a different name or whatever. But I, I personally don't remember replying to it. If I did, then I did. But I just, I don't remember doing it this way. If, if I did in this way, I don't, I don't, you know. Because I have a lot on my mind. I got work. I got a bunch of other stuff. So it's like I don't remember every single little comment I replied to this way. Yeah, it's okay, John. Yeah. So I mean, Dave, Dave Bauer, if I did reply to your comment, you know, okay, I did. I just don't remember doing so. That's all. Okay. I wasn't trying to imply that you had or whatever, John. It's just. Oh no 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 no! I I, I didn't. You know, I mean. I, I, you know, I probably, I probably did reply to those comments because I, I reply to comments quite a lot, actually. I, yeah. I, yeah. Like on my off time, I probably did. I just don't recall. I just don't forget about. I forgot about it or something like that. I don't know. So, oh, John, uh, just in case, and reflect upon the word "so called," although he didn't do much reflecting. Uh, I think he. I'll show you a, a screencast. I did it earlier in the video. You were, in this stream. He sent me this. He sent me this like I was supposed to be worried about it. But, you know, it, 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 that's the video that Aaron Deering did, Beelzebub. I don't know if you remember it. Oh yeah, I I, I saw it saved on my one of my one of my one of my uh, Google drives. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I I I did a screen the other day which I deleted. I just didn't, you know. But remember this, Bob. Your bad emails, plural. Uh, I could share this like I'm uh, scared. But he got this video of Aaron Deering. And I thought, how ridiculous can you get? Uh, like, I'm bothered. So I said to him, look, here's John Craggan's email. Ask him for the screencast of the email the original one has sent, which I had apologised for. And it should never have been sent to you, John. But I yeah. think he... A copy of those e that email that initial first one I sent, right? Uh, like I'm worried and like it, this is okay, <laughs> Bob, an exposure of a dead you infiltrator on YouTube. Uh, I mean, I mean, like, like what? What is he? Th what like? Was he? Was he, was he like threatening you or something? Well, yeah, it sounded like that because I'd. I have accidentally, genuinely, well, I mean, it was purposeful at the time, but I believed it was him. He was, I actually thought that because, well, one person on my channel had said, oh, your King James Bible is Catholic, and that was to tell the tie he's finished saying that, and then later yeah. he said, he, oh, he was only joking, he apologised for that. But I knew for a fact that somebody else had said something similar in connection with Erasmus. So this was, I did a stream about it over a week ago, I screencast all the comments and deleted the video accident. Well, not accidentally, but I'd thought that my videos would be saved on Periscope or Twitch, which they aren't. They, they expire after three or four weeks or something. And like, uh, but then I'm saying, oh yeah, it was reflect on the word. It must have been because there's only about six people commented on my channel. So only yesterday did Michael Miller admit to making that comment. So now I've been made uh, inadvertently to look like a liar. And so he, this guy has done sent me this email. So if you can, because this guy's email is virtualinsight3 at gmail gmail.com. I've obviously got no discernment. So perhaps you could send him a, a, a copy of that initial email that I sent to all the Denlinger crew, John, after this <laughs> they accused me of being a Jesuit. You know what's kind of funny? You, you, you know what's kind of funny about that video too? Is that in that video, uh, Aaron Daring this Aaron Daring refers to me as Brother John Cragen, old brother John Cragen. So that video was before I had my salvation revoked because he was calling me Brother John Cragen. Oh yeah, Brother John Cragen, you know. It's like, but you know, but that was before I had my salvation revoked. But that's funny because it just showed that video just shows how they, they call you a brother, but then the moment you say anything about Brian, you're no longer a brother. You've now you you've now lost your salvation, you know, it's like Yeah. 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 Oh well. 
but I just like that. So he's like, he's like trying to threaten you, like, oh, you know, the, uh, oh, I'll share this video, you know, you know, oh, Bob exposed the Jesuit. Let me share this, you know. Oh, you want me to, you want me to share this? It's like, like, like what? Like, is that? Is that? I mean, it's supposed to be a threat or something? Is he like, you know, taunting you or like? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the point of that was. I, I did get the email in hindsight. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't the best thing to do. Normally, I would just wait. Uh, a period of time usually quite a long time but i was quite angry john i'm sure you were angry at being accused of being a jesuit falsely yeah i mean it, it's not it's not fun being accused of that you know what i mean it, it's it's like it, i mean pretty much it ruined my whole week him doing that to me pretty much but how can you prove that you're not i mean are you going to get a letter off the so-called <laughs> jesuit general or something i don't what? know it was kind of funny because in that video uh, <laughs> of Aaron Deering, I mean, I mean, like I'm not even joking. He literally says that um, it that that it's possible that when you were in jail, that two Jesuit priests visited you and basically uh, told you to basically, hey, if you create a YouTube channel, then like we'll 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 give you we'll, we'll basically cut back. We'll get the judges to cut back on your sentence or whatever. Like he actually said that. Like he said the Jesuits told you to create a YouTube channel. And, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then basically, did, and then if you did so, then they they would basically get the judge just to cut like years off your sentence. I mean, like seriously. I mean, like he actually says that in the video. Yeah. John, cut back on my sentence. I did thirty years <laughs> jail. I did yeah. fifteen years longer than I should have done. Even probation admit that they don't know why. I don't. I didn't commit any crimes in there. 30 years, yeah, that's one way of cutting back on your sentence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and, and the thing is, too, is that, you know, is that, is that from, from what I've heard, you know, from what I've been told, I think you were released in, like, 2011 or something. Yes, I mean, that's right. So, yeah. it's like at that time, YouTube was still kind of, was still kind of relatively young. So, it's like creating a YouTube channel would not have been the best way to have influence to destroy Bible believing groups because most Bible believing groups did not have YouTube as their primary source. So it's like, no. so, oh. so it's, it, it, it's like, t and the thing is too, is that, you know, that was when you were released. So in order for them to tell you, Oh, we'll cut years off your sentence. They would have had to have been years prior to you being released. So likely before YouTube was even like existed. So it's like, it, it's like, like his logic is very flawed, you know? It's like, oh, create a YouTube channel. Oh, wait a second, YouTube doesn't exist. So just wait five years and then create a YouTube channel. You know, it's like, huh? <laughs> and, and, and then supposedly Jesuit priests happen to choose you of all people. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. okay. No, they, they would never, they're not stupid enough to pick somebody who's got a criminal record. It's just too easy to uh, yeah. do your dirt. Yeah. And no. And, and, yeah, Jesuits have got bigger fish on the plate, John. Yeah, yeah. You know. and, and, and it's like it's like in order for them to like even know who you are, like you would have already had, you would have had to have like prior connections to Jesuits in order for them to even know who you are. So it's like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. I was listen. I don't want to get on this again, but like when I got saved in 92, I was learning about Jesuits in 92, yeah. Catholic World Church. I know, I would do, I would run a mile from them, John. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, I mean, like it'd be safe to say, even if they came to you and said, hey, we'll, get, we'll cut yours off your sentence, you would probably would say no, because just your convictions would tell you, would say, would make you say no, you know? Definitely. I mean, yeah. I was reading the King James Bible right from within three or four weeks of getting saved. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, I could put you in contact, actually, with Gordon, John. I don't know if you ever remember me mentioning his name. <coughs> He's actually on a certain social website. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And, and, and the thing is, too, is that, you know, is that, is that, like, 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 from, from, like, in your situation, you know, if Jesuits came to you and said, hey, if you if you basically work for us, we'll give you like we'll cut like what ten years off your sentence. Okay, we'll, we'll cut ten years. Well, I mean that's basically the equivalent of Satan coming to Jesus saying, "Hey, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all of these kingdoms." You know, any any sane Christian would say no and and tell him to go away. You know. Yeah. I'm I'm unbribable, John. <laughs> yeah. 
I think so. I believe so. Yeah. 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 Anyway, anyway, I, I, have to, I have to get going. It's um, it's it's like just the county morning, and I gotta I gotta get to bed <laughs> because again, I work the night shift, right. so I'm up all, up all night. Oh. I sleep all day. Yeah. Okay, John. Make sure you have something to eat before you go to work. Yeah. I couldn't. I can't believe that you're six foot five. I, I'm around. I'm like around that height. I'm actually. I'm pretty big, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. see ya. Bless you, John. Thank you, John. Oh, 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 and, and don't forget to watch the debate. It, it's like you won't regret it. It's priceless. Yeah. I, will I, I, I mean, like, like you'll be dying laughing. It's just, it's so funny. But right. it's All actually right. just featured off bit shoot, John. Oh yeah, true. I I, I I downloaded the audio of it on my phone. But I'll like, do a Google search on it, and I'll I'll probably find it somewhere. Someone will yeah. have it. Just just yeah. search up the like, just search up Halsey English versus Searing Girl or something like that, or yeah. like debate or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, right. see ya. Bye. Okay, John. God bless you.